This new artist series, Train Hopping Analog Conversations in Digital Times, demonstrates the power of collaboration in challenging times. Coupling the objectives of the gallery space at Arts at King Street Station with the cultural mission of the Goethe Institute, Train Hopping seeks to provide a platform to center BIPOC creatives. Thus far, the blues has brought me through. This I know to be true. Yes, it wasn't nothing but the blues. Hey, yeah, the gut bucket stomped down. Shoot out the lights. It's too damn funky in here. On oh, blues. The well is a real mother for you. Well, what's thrilling you is killing me, say. Cause your worries ain't like mine. Blues reaching back to where in Africa a moan rose and spiraled into a wail across the Atlantic to this strange land where we were enslaved and our drum outlawed. Fools never thought to be concerned with what they call darkest songs. Too simple to know what those songs was telling us. Who was running that night? When? Where? How? Blue Gospel told us. Steal away, steal away, steal away home. I ain't got long to stay here. Yes, we did. And not to know Jesus, let us now praise the blues deep in the dark of the darkest night. Barefoot through the swamp, can't see your hand in front of you. Neither that cotton mouth easing up on your sweet baby girl. Knowing that Harriet kept that pistol at hand for the weary and the fearful, why nothing but the blue woo woo woos could tell a body how to go on through. Don't say nothing to me about pilgrims or pioneers. I got your profiles, encourage my fellow Americans. That soul music was comforting, rolling, winding, soothing through our spirits somehow. And now most would have just lay down and died, and you know that is the stone truth. Patty rollers on horseback and hot pursuit, hounds just baying, and those white men hooping and hollering when they get to thinking about the reward money or how much somebody called a likely wench or a strapping buck might fetch at auction. Now as if slavery wasn't enough, as if manifest destiny wasn't enough. Surely that would be more than sufficient to start them low down blues. Start those blues, blues flowing just like that Ohio River we only had to cross to freedom. So all I can say is hail the blues. Queen bee of music, mother of all North American music roots. Blues, hey, you made a way out of no way. Blues, oh blues. You made my back strong, my heart not fall, splintered and tore up out my chest, my feet. Take that one more step. Oh, if ever a song could rise and take form, it would have to be you, oh, blue, black, mighty, mighty tone. The way you held me, nobody knows the, the trouble I've seen. Oh, 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 no, no, nobody, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you, yeah, howling like a mountain jack. When I hear you, I know you, and I know I'll be all right by and by. Same way you held my mama and, and hers before, and, and all reaching back in your eternal arms. Blues, I love you. Be you moan, shout, shuffle, or stomp, I'm there. Turquoise, lapis, sapphire, indigo, sea and sky. Let me count the ways you appear to my wondering eyes and ears. Oh, I feel you, oh, song of my deepest soul. Rising from back, way back from Africa to plain dealing Louisiana to let us not disremember Mississippi. And let us not disremember sweet home, Chicago. I said, come on, on, on. Say, baby, don't you want to go to where the blues amplified itself so as to rise above the din of the L train, the stockyards, and the steel mills pumping sweet blue gospel? Or was it gospel blues onto the urban prairie and, and the juke joints just a juking on? 
Why, before we ever marched with eloquent signboards, Muddy threw back his head and roared, Yeah, I'm a man. And Miss Coco Taylor pitched her wang dang doodle, said all oh, night long. Listen from a place where the tone meets the note in love with candlelight warm, meets the note, encounters the rhythm in a sweet sway of step. Hold me in your arms like a voodoo child, baby. Ooh. Blues, I love you, oh, oh, and I don't know I say, but I swear I'm gonna love you till the very day I die. Let us now pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 the blues. Mama Stormy. <laughs> My name is Mama Free. I have come to greet your shrine here oh, and all that you hold space for. Oh. Thank you for selecting me from the list of those who you could have worked with on this project. Oh, thank you. Is there something that we can put in the center before we start? Do you have sure. something? I have two stones. What are they? Why are they here? This is amber, which is a very ancient, it's not a stone. It's the blood of a tree from millions of years ago. Mm. And it has solidified into this form and it floated onto the, in the ocean for millions of years and it washed up somewhere. And here this is. This is also very ancient. This is iron ore. This is probably a piece of a meteorite, actually. So. And I'm so honored that you're here, and I'm so thankful to be here with you. Your work is, it touched my heart. So thank you so much for traveling so far through, uh, through all the present. I salute your ancestors. We, we come from this place, though, that is in so many places at one time. Mm -hmm. which is why I brought for my item to share into our sacred space. I brought this red, black, and green flag. Beautiful. And my great-grandparents, Elizabeth Ruffin and Australia Ruffin, were among the very first to fly the red, black, and green flag in the United States. Wow. And they were spiritualists. They founded with their friends and colleagues, the Knights of the All-Seeing Eye and the School of Mediumship and Psychology. Mm -hmm. And for them, the red, black, and green, red represented the blood of our people mm -hmm. and um, those whose lives were, um, I guess, absorbed within our journey. Mm -hmm. um, the black is for our melanin and mm -hmm. the green is for the land of Africa. Mm -hmm. I have reinterpreted this and this may resonate with you as well. Mm. The red for me in this time is for us to be able to do our DNA lineage and our mm. genealogy so that we can reconnect our uh, lineages and find out where we come from and mm. reconnect because mm. passports, planes, like we can go home. Thank you. And um, the black is for black girl magic, black boy joy, black yes. excellence. Yes. And the green is for money because ah. it's important for us to get the bag because it liberates so much. It's a tool. Right. It's not to be worshiped or to be the focus, but with it, we can do a lot of really positive things. Okay. So this is my contribution to our circle. Thank you, Asheru. That's right. May our ancestors, our collective ancestors, inspire the generations. Thank you. May it be so. Be so. As I'm talking to you, your eyes are shooting sparks. <laughs> you can't see it though. <laughs> it's interesting how you don't know what your face and, and, mm. and, and your body language is conveying to a person. Right. But I just want you to know that you are channeling this energy that is superhuman right now to me. Mm. And I don't know if it's maybe the lights in the studio. No, it's the lights. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's, it's an intangible <laughs> thing though. It's like, a, it's, a, mm. it's a liquid light. Right. It's not that you're about to cry. It's mm. literally something that you mm. only see reflected on the water. Mm. Um, 
And so when I think about water, I then think about the ancestral mothers. Mm -hmm. And there's a part in your poem mm -hmm. that I remember the beginning of it when you began to talk about it, when you were saying how um, the blues held your mother and your mother's mother. Mm -hmm. And it's just this one section of the poem I know um, I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to add the, these things into this conversation mm -hmm. in post-production. Mm -hmm. But um, our mothers, as they're represented in your work and we're sitting here in front of this beautiful quilt, mm -hmm. Mama's hands made this quilt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mamas are represented in your quilt. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I am channeling the work of my matrilineage. lineage Mm -hmm. um, I come from Virginia, mm -hmm. as you know, and uh, Richmond to be exact. Mm -hmm. And my great grandparents and my great grandmother specifically um, did something that she called the work. Mm -hmm. And um, they really made sure that we were able to channel the spirit of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. um, here's how they would get their, their um, circles together. Mm -hmm. In our congregation, everyone would come wearing white. My mom grew up in this, right? She didn't tell me about it, but mm -hmm. my grandmother told me about it and my mom's cousins and everything, they all told me about it. Mm -hmm. I guess she didn't want me to take after this family lineage because she was scared, very much like in your family. Yes. Your mom didn't want you to carry on to a tradition that scared. Yeah. But um, fear aside, it's mm -hmm. still, we did what we were born to do anyway. You can't stop, you know, maintain you the rock. Don't stop the rock, That's right? It. That's it. But, um, so what they would do is they'd all wear white and then they would gather in front of um, the young women that were before they had um, reached full maturity mm -hmm. and they would imagine, so say, say for instance it's your day, right? Mm -hmm. You would say, I want in five years to create a space where people can come and tell their stories and that there's food and that there's music and there's spoken word and mm -hmm. there's merch and all this. And so we will all imagine what you're talking about because the principle of their belief yes. system yes. was to think of a thought is the prophecy of its fulfillment. That oh, was wow. our mantra. To wow. think of a thought is the prophecy of its fulfillment wow. meant that it's already happened and if you can collectively see it, mm -hmm. then you're just gonna basically live it and work towards making it a reality. So everyone would be wearing the white, mm. we would have the candles, we would have the incense, mm. and then we would then project into the future, but we would pull mm. the energy of seven generations in the past, Aye. knowing that those people had to imagine their futures as well, and that we are, their wildest dreams come true as well. Yes. So that's why I'm grateful in this moment, because I would love to ask you, what do you see for the evolution of this project mm -hmm. so that I can then figure out how in wearing my white and coming with you in this circle, mm -hmm. how can I help that come to fruition? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about this piece. Well, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. so the, the, the title of this piece is Home of Good, A Black Seattle Story Quilt. So Home of Good, um, the title comes from a, a, a barbecue restaurant that existed from the 50s till two years ago Okay. called r &L Home of Good Barbecue. Um, these are the two ladies. It's Miss Barbara and her mother. See the mamas? And they, she brought the recipe from Tallulah, Louisiana. Oh, wow. Which is so poetic and beautiful, too, isn't, isn't it? it? So, so that was my inspiration because this, this, this temple of barbecue closed. And it, it, it was a sacred space because it was so loving. It wasn't just the food. It was the food because it was how it was prepared. Mm -hmm. And it was sacred food, mm -hmm. right? And it was... African food, you know, and, and, but the way that they would hold you when you went in there, the way the space held you, like Grandma's Kitchen with the That's art. right there? This. Yes, yes, how you would come up in an order and, and, um. It's so unassuming, it's just mm, so humble, like. So, so, so they were the roots of it, and, and, and we know that so often that, you know, poor and working class people who really can be, the, have been the heart of a community are not, you know, lifted up and so much of my work because I was born into you know um, working hustling class people is to lift up the lives of people who have been excluded from the official narrative so you would never know like the stories that I tell about these intersections between the the gay community and 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 and, and the black community and the working class people 
they're all of a all of a piece. So, but this was specifically designed to look at the black presence in the central district of Seattle, which was historically black and has now been gentrified. So you have the, the Black Panthers from Seattle, you have another famous barbecue place, you have famous people like Quincy Jones, Ernestine Anderson, Buddy Catlett, who are, Jimi Hendrix, who are from Seattle. And then, you know, featuring the women, um, Sweethearts of Rhythm. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of moving through time. And the great Dr. Maxine Mims up in the corner there, Cabby Mitchell, who was the first black premier ballet dancer here in Seattle. So. I was trying to bring forth aspects of the story of, of the history of black people in Seattle, which because of gentrification just seemed to be subsiding and going away. I mean, you really have an arc here because is this not, didn't you tell me this is the first black? The first black teacher in Seattle public schools, yes. And, and someone told me the other day that some ladies came in, they knew her, oh, they wow. were talking about her, about how beautiful she looked. and. You know, so, so this is a, is a, I see it as a medicine object as well. Yeah. Because I'm not in here spying, you know, but I, I think of this because I keep getting the reports that people come in and go, oh, and someone I didn't even know go, I heard of the quilt, you know. So it's, it's become something that is giving and that makes me so happy. It's, it's, it's a, and, and the installation is dedicated to my grandmother, Miss Cordelia Bell Jackson, who had her business right here on Jackson Street. So this is in. Yes, with, with her, that's where she, they, they, uh, back in the days when she was making her husband jealous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was your grandmother. That's my grandmother. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, this installation until April or May, the end of April, is dedicated, is in her honor, in her loving memory, so. I love this so much. Yeah. So the women that crafted this mm -hmm. by hand mm. represent yet again that matriarchal queenship. Absolutely. That is so important to any narrative. I mean, we all come from a woman, mm -hmm. point blank period, full sure. stop. Sure, sure. We had to live there, you know, it was well, our first rent. There you, you go. <laughs> there you go. So I, I love that so much um, because in my work in Richmond, we really focus on making sure that the ancestral mothers are um, you know, remembered and mm -hmm. celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ways that I feel our work is stages and evolution in helping these narratives to get to the people. Mm -hmm. You've made this. Mm -hmm. These are no longer images just in an archive or in, in someone's old photo album or in an Encyclopedia Britannica somewhere. Right. You've put it in such a way that people can come into this beautiful gallery space. Mm -hmm in their own city, they don't have to pay money to come up here. Mm -hmm. But what about what happens when people aren't necessarily inclined to come into a gallery space? Right. And that's why I feel that you asking me to come here creates an opportunity for us to be able to take your existing work and help more narratives mm. get to more people. Mm. And if indeed you would be open to the idea, as we were talking before, mm -hmm. what if something like this were in large format mm -hmm. on the streetscape. I love it. Let's do it. Because it was always for the community. Yeah, it's a beautiful You know, story. there's there's so much going on and there's so much going on and 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 some of some of the, the, the you know the the trauma is if you feel you don't see yourself. If you're in a place and you can't see yourself and you can't even see that you once were there. Yes. So this is also to restore with hopes to restore, sure. you know, the knowledge of the young of the young people coming. Like, oh, you've been here. They have to be inspired. They yeah. have to know that yeah. if if someone is saying, okay, I really want to go into a mall mm -hmm. and set up a um, a little restaurant or something or a carry out, mm -hmm. and their families might say, oh, why are you trying to do that? That's way too difficult. That's mm -hmm. way too expensive. Those people don't want you down there. But that mm -hmm. child can then come and say, or that young person can say, excuse me, no. This has been a thing. Black women have always had restaurants here. This mm -hmm. is, did you say in 60 years? Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. had been feeding folks here in the city. Absolutely. Um, and so the notion of being able to put this in large format is great in my mind because eventually someone is going to purchase this. This, I, this quilt is for sale, no? Yes. Yeah. And if the person decides that this is going to be a family heirloom that they just keep in their own private building, mm. or if they put it publicly, we'll always have the opportunity to then use large format. And the greatest thing about the medium Perfect. that I, I use is yes. paper yes. and glue. 
It's so um, great. It's so perfect. It's wheat paste. Yes. Do you remember ever putting up a wheat paste poster? Mm, I probably do. <laughs> Back probably then it was do. like, oh God, don't tell anybody. Just yeah. Get it up quick and keep pushing. Yeah. But yeah. nowadays, I have to say that um, I have taken the responsibility to push the, I guess, the patience of my the folks in my city to the point where they're now happy to see me coming with the <laughs> So good, so good, so good. <laughs> so um, awesome. I've used it in such a way that there's a telephone number hmm. at the bottom of the paper installations that I'm um, using. And I, I found that a beautiful space to put installations hmm. is in the bottom of light poles. And the I reason being it. is that, I mean, do you burn candles for your ancestors? So many different traditions do give That's light to their wonderful. ancestors. So that why not so use good. a light pole installation or a street light mm. to, and also we put our altars on the floor. Mm -hmm. So they're close to the ground and it's a place where so good. you can have pictures of ancestors or ancestral narratives or those who are elders mm. represented um, in a site specific place. So even if it's gentrified, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we refuse to allow the mm -hmm. space to somehow just evaporate as what it was for 60 years. Absolutely. They wouldn't even want it if it wasn't for the fact that these women made it to be a destination spot. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. So, so I, yes, I love that idea. I love that idea. And it is really meant it is really meant to be to be medicine in the way and not, it was never a vision that it should go just somewhere. So I feel so I feel so grateful that you're here and that you've brought this kind of vision to a way to make it be a real conversation and make it conversation part though that's you and that medicine. spoken word that yeah. word sound power yeah. these images that we are talking about putting in that bottom of the light poles cannot just be a picture mm -hmm. and you just walk by sure sure sure. i mean how are they going to really know so that's mm -hmm. why i appreciate you so much because mm -hmm. the uh word sound power is the way that it's described in mm -hmm. the five percent nation the nation of gods and earths okay zulu and yeah. all of that yeah, we yeah. need that word sound power mm -hmm. so if you call the telephone number that is um, represented through typography at the bottom of these street lights yeah. um, from these installations mm. that I can make of your work, then you call that number, you press in the code, I love and it. then you get to hear either your poem or you yeah. get to hear them speak about what they did or the descendants of this woman who was the first teacher. So wonderful. Let people say it in their own words. Mm -hmm. Rather than just put the um, Gilded Age statuary and mm -hmm. saying, let's put up a one or two million dollar statue to commemorate these things. Exactly. We don't have two million dollars. It yeah. didn't cost two million when they did it anyway, because yeah. crafting was a lot cheaper to get good work back then, right? Yeah. But yeah. if we use structures that are already beautiful, like one thing about Seattle, y'all have some gorgeous street lamps. Hmm. The bases mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. are exquisite. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it would be my honor to translate what you've done in this quilt into mm. the bottom of these street lamps mm -hmm. and then record the audio messages for a minute or two minutes long mm -hmm. of telling what you're seeing in that I space. I love it. I love it. I love it. We'll I love never it. forget if we can yeah. hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and see it. Right, right. It's it's just it's just so important to to keep our voice in the conversation, we lately have had um, yes. anti-vaxxers marching with mm. loud megaphones through the public market. Mm. You know, Obviously so no masks, no vaxxers. No, just you know, toxic. and and just right wingers. So so that was a great shock to me. Um, but what that speaks to is there's a vacuum. There was a vacuum, and they saw it, and they went in there. Mm. You know, and people are frightened of them, so they're not confronting them. So it's 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 very important that our voices are here, our stories are here. If we're going to shape, this is a transforming city, and if we're going to build um, relationships with one another across the country, like you've come from across the country, this is you know this is amazing. Up to little Seattle, you know, it's just the great thing not about so it little is that anymore. This work yeah. It works wherever mm. you need it to work. Yes, yes, yes. It was so. meant um, in the city mm. of Richmond. There's about 68 installations now. There'll be probably That's another incredible. 100 That's to roll incredible. out throughout the year. There's what? no lack of um, stories to tell. Exactly. There's no lack of people to speak to what they are the legacy of from the narratives that happened mm. in the past. Mm. And 
at the end of the day, it's just that we are in service to the communities and our mm -hmm. ancestors. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have been the ones that did this work. We just mm -hmm. have to find a way to help amplify it. Mm -hmm. This is the difference between place keeping and mm -hmm. place making. Mm -hmm. So when people say, oh, you know, are you into the place making movement? And I'm like, no, I'm not making the place. Yeah. The place was made by those who mm. were, did this resistance and intersectionality and self-determination work. Mm. This is our collective work and responsibility, Ujamaa. Mm -hmm. But I'm place keeping. We are place keeping mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it was already there. Mm -hmm. And it's not from the top down someone saying, oh, let's make sure that we don't gentrify fully before we let these stories um, go away. Mm -hmm. Not saying place making is not important mm -hmm. but prior to place making is place keeping honoring those who kept the ball in play the whole mm -hmm. time before mm -hmm. it was popular mm -hmm. that to me is the guerrilla street art self-determination work that we have in common yes that we are going to continue <laughs> yes. may it be so may it be so yes Ashe -oh. Ashe -oh. <laughs> to the future. yes and back yes yes i believe it Thank you. It's so inspiring. I'm so, I'm, I'm, it just, it feels like it's already happening. Thank you for choosing me. Yeah. I'll come whenever you call me, just like the ancestors. What? They will come. <laughs> may this collective uh, work inspire generations. Yes. Power to the people. Yes. May it be so. May it be Say so. May it be so. Ah, shit. May it be so. May it be so. Ah, shit.